Tattooing nowadays is, is really an art. It has become a, 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 a mainstream, but in the, in, the, in the good sense of the term, it has really transferred, or it is transitioning from a subculture where a certain practice corresponds to a certain visual and social culture to um, something that is available to anyone to express whatever people want to express and say about themselves. And um, I think nowadays, I'm pretty confident to say that you probably have more tattooists coming from art schools and who have been trained in art schools or some sort of art background than people who don't. And I think that um, it represents pretty well, it, it explains pretty well what tattooing is today. I think we're really currently seeing tattooing as being the, the last real subculture, the latest ones before having been maybe in the 80s or 90s, you know, punk, hip hop, things like this, that sort of transition to being, you know, legitimate cultures. Um, that was a while ago. And tattooing is, is a almost untouched, um, completely self-sufficient culture that is incredibly powerful, that touches on something sacred. What I represent is obviously that and, and trying to bring um, myself and the people I work with and, uh, and show that in fact it is, it is a most contemporary practice that is relevant to, to anything around from watchmaking to fashion, to fine art, to politics, to, to anything. This is something that needs that is addressed and that is powerful and um, that in many ways a lot of other uh, people in other fields um, are, are looking for this kind of energy and this kind of power this kind of impact that tattooing just naturally has and um, and what I'm trying to do is to, to ensure that if there are transitions like this they're done in the best possible way and not just some sort of hijack I'm, I'm you know, born and raised uh, in Switzerland, watches and when you when you're born in Switzerland, watches is is different. It's it's all around you, and it's not about luxury watches. It's not like when you're from somewhere else. If you get interested in watches, there's a certain idea of what watch culture is, and and it is a very sort of specific thing. Like no one's interested in in knowing like whatever you know like like you, you'll go to to the real watchmaking and to the when you're swiss it's, it's different you know you'll you'll have friends who, who who work at any any you know people making quartz watches people working you know in in all kinds of things it's it's it's, it's a very different approach it's like people actually doing it on a day-to-day -day basis it's a huge industry in switzerland and and i grew up with you know my my mom's ex-boyfriend was was a watch designer no, no one so no, no one you will know about just a guy who was designing watches only much later in life that i started having a, a more sort of structured understanding of how the wa watch world works and uh, but as soon as i could afford I, I i bought myself a nice watch and and it was something that i felt really strongly about my grandfather had a had a you know a couple of couple of good watches and, and I, I remember seeing you know him as a kind of patriarchal figure with his gold watch yeah. and and it was always something meaningful and um and yeah I guess it was kind of natural to get into it so also myself being a designer I always had somewhere in the back of my mind the idea that one day if I get to if I got to uh, design a watch it'd be something quite amazing and um and yeah this opportunity came up and to be honest it was especially a dream come true because I had been approached by other brands occasionally that I'd, I was not really particularly interested in working with and um, and I think that uh, on the, in the, the small world of, of top level watchmaking, Hublot is the only only company really that has the uh, the guts it's very important to stay coherent and to stay to not alienate your um, your clientele and it's very much at the end of the day it's all about producing a, a great watch and um, and so I think that's something that Hublot in particular is is is, is 
incredibly good at and, and people like uh, Mr. Guadalupe being also continuing um, perpetuating the, the vision of someone like Jean-Claude Biver is, is, is exactly that, you know, it is exactly the role of a visionaire it's, it's not to apply a formula because formula is where you get you, you get lost and stuck eventually and unfortunately that's the rule more than, than the exception in the watch world whereas when you have a real visionaire doing something you know that the human mind works in mysterious ways as well and 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 then you can have like people taking really strong um stances or making taking what looks like risks um on this and that but eventually you realize that it, it makes total sense and um and when you hear um when you hear jean-claude biver talk about even about tattooing all of a sudden it doesn't look like a disruption it looks like it makes total sense and and i think this is this is the key for any brand especially nowadays if if your brand trying to connect or connect it to um to the world to to also you know generations from like 20 years old onwards um the world is is, is going so fast um you you need that you cannot apply formula uh formulas anymore you really need to to be able to function with that kind of, with that kind of fast pace, you know, the, like brainstorming, like constant brainstorming, but also find, keep your identity, keep some sort of coherence in there. And I think uh, Hublot is exceptionally good at that for sure.